you were reading the book before you even knew that there was a film in development. I was yeah. wondering um, what grabbed you about it at that point? Um, well, I was just really struck by her character. And um, I, had, I hadn't seen any versions of the film. I really didn't know anything about it. Um, but I started reading it and she's just, she has such a strong sense of who she is and, and she doesn't compromise herself for anyone. And, and also I think the thing that really did it for me was that she was just 18 years old. And for some reason in my mind, she'd always lived as, as an adult. So I'd always thought it was sort of like, oh, adult issues and, and all that. But I was, you know, I was 19 or something. And, and I was like, wow, she's, she's like my age and she's been through so much and, and she's just a really cool character. And you have this um, incredible stillness on the screen as right. Jane. Yeah. I was wondering how, how much thought you're putting into that sort of physical aspect of the character. Yeah, um, I think that, I don't know, because the, the difficult thing when you do adapt a story like this for film is that the book is like 500 pages of her internal monologue. You're hearing everything from, from everything that's going on in her head and everything that she observes and everything that she sees. And the, the challenge for something like that is how do you keep that intensity of thought and, and, and everything that she's always constantly thinking and seeing and, and hearing when there's not always um, like verbally time to say that. So we kind of focused a lot, I guess. You know, you just instantly realize that you can't have like a 500 page script. So. Um, we, we ended up focusing a lot on also moments where she's not necessarily in the middle of those intense conversations. And um, what about the costume? How far does that help? Because I understand yeah. you, were, you were wearing, you know, period costumes yeah. from, from the underwear up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The corset helps immensely when you're trying to physicalise that character because there's literally only one option <laughs> for, for movement. Like, you, you don't have really any room and it, it it holds you in a certain way. So, uh, yeah, you, you instantly get an idea of that repression and the restriction, and it really sort of restricts your breathing and everything. So it, it's really incredible for the, for the role. And then it's just incredibly painful and makes me so glad not to be, you know, in that time. <laughs> And there's a significant age difference between you and, and Michael mm. Fassbender, who plays Mr. Rochester. Yeah. Does that, does that mean that there's a, an awkwardness that sort of comes naturally that you could use there? Actually, no. It was, it was amazing. Like, I had so much fun with him. And we became really good friends very quickly and, and had a similar way of working. So we were kind of perfectly matched in that we were able to counter the intensity of those scenes with a lot of goofing around. I think we both became the mental age of like eight every other time when we weren't filming and just, just goofed around a lot and then brought that, that energy in and put it into the scene. So yeah, we had a lot of fun. And you also worked with Jamie Bell in this film. You yeah. also worked with him before, yeah. didn't you? So yeah. was, did that make the sort of rapport easier? And Definitely. We had we had a lot of fun. Again, like similar to Michael, he's just a lot of fun to work with. And um, and it's always fun working with somebody that you have a history with. You just, um, yeah, it's easy to kind of click back into that way of working and you know each other's sort of style of preparation. And so again, we just had heaps of fun.